Real life sweet star. Yeah. We got him in the building. Yeah. We got him, guys. Uh, uh, Mr. Answer right back. He going to answer right back. Big facts. Uh, Terrence Civilian, Terrence Gangsters, Terrence, the man Williams in the building. Facts. Um, Man, let's go and get right into it, man. I don't want to waste no time, man, because uh, let's jump it off by talking about the clubhouse combo. Uh, you and Wag 100 was about to try, really about to go – in, in, into depth in a spar off in a in a bar off, but it seemed like it, 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 it didn't happen the way you was planning it, or either he didn't want to. I don't know. Just tell us what happened with that man, and why you why is Wack one hundred? Why was he a target at the time of on the clubhouse application? Okay, it went back to I seen where Wack had post that he was suing someone, and I felt like. Some of the stuff he was putting online, I was like, man, these guys be claiming, they gang members claiming they real, but that's telling. Certain stuff is, you, you, you snitch. So he was mad. He made, a life, he made a post about me on his Instagram, but then he took it down. Um, so they kind of set me up, right? So people, everybody who hit me up my DM, I answer all my DMs. So I don't be, I was, what's up? And this particular night, I was bored. So there was some guy hit me up. He's like, hey, man, come hang out with us in Clubhouse. Now, mind you, I didn't much know this was Wack Clubhouse. This was his room. Because the guy hit me in my DM, asked me to come. I was like, all right, let me put the Clubhouse app back on my phone. Because I had it on there like three times. I put it on, take it off, put it on. Because I didn't <laughs> see no benefit in that. So I was bored. Dude said, come on. I was like, all right, I'm going to go in there. So I go in the Clubhouse, right? <laughs> it's a, two dudes, a female, maybe two, three dudes. One sound like he white, but I found out he a Latino. So um, they, they, they're kind of respectful at first. So they asked me questions about certain stuff. And we talking. That's when whack bust off in there. You B-A-N, you rat, you snitch, you got something to tell me, da 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 uh, He going in, right? So I'm like, no, you got something? You been having playing with my name? You got something to tell me? I'm like, no. Because I already said what I had to say about you. No one had to tell you, right? Well, you had that, he going and going and going and fussing. And my thing is, it takes two to argue, right? So I'm yeah. like, I'm, I've never been the one to be online arguing. That's some females do that type of stuff. So I'm like, no, I'm not about to get online, get to arguing and fussing with you, uh, you know, online. I'm, that's, that's just not me. So the people that was being respectful at first, that's in his thing, switched on me. Because he was like, and y'all going to let him in here? And, 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 and y'all, he spoke on my name. Don't with the, you rat, you be there with the going in on me, right? Yeah. So I'm like, one of my like, look, sweetheart, sweetheart, calm down. Because he acted, the other dude, he was acting like a female, right? So Wack was like, at least if we had to say he got up out of there. Because at first I was like, Wack, you know, you be riding stunner penis. Stunner balls be on your chin a lot. So mm -hmm. he didn't like that, right? But mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm the same how I am. I'm not going to change for no one. So I'm not going to match your, because this was, here's the thing. I expose Wack to the world, right? It's this. He like to holler. So if you come in there and you hollering, that's giving them momentum. So now they, that's going to keep, they're going to keep going, they're going to keep going. But if you just be quiet, let him, you know how you do your girl? Go ahead, first. go ahead, get it out, girl. Vin, go ahead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then once it's finished, like, okay, you through, you finished. So now they mad, but now it's like, okay, I'll, I'll have them more fighting me. Yeah. Right? So that's what I did him, right? So I used reverse psychology on him. Then he hung up, I, got, I went out, then I went back in, I pulled back up, there was shock, and I came back in there. Got that. They were like, whack, he back. Whack like, man, you know, I'm gonna move, I don't have no, no more word for him, I'm out of here. He leave. I'm like, whack never run from an argument, whack loved it, so I'm like, wow, right, ran, right? Now, here's my thing. I like to have fun, so, because I get a lot of people in my DM now telling me about this, they going off, telling me how much clown whack he is, they like how I handle it. But this is me. I'm not gonna. Ch I'm not gonna get into the shout match. I don't do that. Um, but this was really got to me, bro. Today, and it's not about no racist thing like that. And you might not be aware of this. What I'm about to bring up. Let's go. Now, we get on social media and we degrade one another. The blacks, right? We try to talk down. This whack get on there, cuss me out like an old sailor. Called me all kind of names. But the child of God. Mm. But Wack got on Vlad TV and, and Vlad asked him, like, you was born or you was raised up? Get what he said. I'm about to shock the world. That man said, yes, sir. No. Nah. He said, yes, sir. No. Nah. Yeah, man. He told Vlad, yes, sir. And I'm like, what the nah. hell? 
you would talk bad about a bunch of brothers. And it's, I'm a Muslim, and we yeah. got white, Chinese, black, all walks of life as Muslims. Yeah. So ain't nothing about being racist. And here's the thing, but you got the Willie syndrome now. Yeah. Because you sit on Vlad and say, yes, sir. You, he was like to see like he in student, the good look. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, yes, sir. You... Full attention. I said, look at this clown. Damn. I said, look at this clown. This clown was just on Clubhouse going in UB. I, everybody, he, he want to fight everybody. Yeah. He wants to fight everybody, but he didn't show up for not one match. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, wow, I know this man. But he did set a good example for the black. So uh, other people who watch the Vlad channel might be like, you know what, this guy handles himself very well. These black people are all not animals. But when they go to his channel, they're like, whoa, this is not the guy who's on Vlad. This yeah. is a totally different guy. He wear a mask. Damn. That man got on Vlad and said, yes, sir, that blew me, bro. I was like, whoa. Damn it. Yeah, they sent it to me today, man. What What are your thoughts when you see, like, Wack as he leaves a room, he has this legion of followers that just, I don't want to say just dick ride him, but, man, they really be on just whatever the hell he say. He could be wrong. He right in their eyes. I understand that because oh, my whole life I've witnessed that, right? Uh, being in prison, I've witnessed that. So I understand it. I'm cool with that because I know um, – in the clubhouse now that they're, they're they have a group, so this, this is my lawyer. So because if y'all gonna rock with me on club, y'all gotta rock with me. Yeah. So if you my people rock with me one thousand, if I'm wrong when we get off air, then tell me I'm wrong, whatever. But right now y'all gotta rock with me. So I get I ain't tripping off that because I they they came at me first. It was cool. They came at me. They're like, man, we need content. Then they try to get me to come back. I was like, no, I came in the first time just to show y'all love, but I want to, I just want to shake the internet for real. But at the end of the day, man, I'm not about to come in there and help y'all with no content and put money in y'all pocket. Y'all are really the enemy. I'm not about to help y'all. But it helped me too because I got on my channel and see, this is what they did. They only played the part when Wack was cussing me out and when they went, they didn't play the part when I came back in there and Wack ran off the air. See, I put that part on my channel because see, I got smarter. Like, you know, I see, oh, I'm about to go back in, in there, record me. So now I got the part when Wack was like, man, oh, I ain't gonna give him no more. Come on, Wack. I was a different type of person. You was you used to people batching your energy for us, argument, yeah. arguing, arguing, arguing. So now if you yelling, I'm yelling. Now I'm giving you momentum to keep going, keep going, keep going. But if I let you argue, now you feel like you just oh, what I'm doing. I ain't doing that. Now I'm getting tired now because I don't have I don't have nobody who I can try to raise my voice over. Mm. I need my I got it. I don't want a headache. I don't I don't have time for that. So but I like it. Let me ask you. Uh, you went on Vlad. Mm -hmm. uh, fresh out, fresh out the fest. You went on Vlad. Mm -hmm. um, Vlad just recently did an interview with a uh, neighborhood talk with uh, Jason Lee, where he talks about the Keefe D situation, and he's talking in detail about him. Like he's given extra ammunition to what Keefe D's case is. Like, yeah, here's what we talked about off camera. Here's what I interpreted by his situation. What are your thoughts as far as a person coming on Vlad's couch to talk about their story? Let's say they're self snitching, and then Vlad then goes on an interview, uh, goes on multiple interviews, let's just say, to talk about that person self-snitching. What part of the game is that? Or do you feel like, man, that's just, where, where there's a dollar, there's a word, there's, there, there's a conversation? A lot of guys don't realize once they get on camera that you being recorded. And it's like how the police say, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say, can it be and will be used against you in the court of law. So now when you get on anybody camera when they when they're interviewing you, they're not holding a gun to you. They not prop have a problem telling you, hey, say this, you out there, you trying to impress people, so you just going, you going. Then then later on you real because Vlad don't he don't edit nothing. He gonna <laughs> give it to this Once you say it is <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So and I and I always tell people I don't fault Vlad. It ain't Vlad. You, it's the one who get up there, you answering that man questions. So you get up there, you make yourself look stupid or, or, or later on, but here they got this G code, that stuff's so overrated, bro. Because there's a lot of these dudes, and I expose a lot of them when I come home, because if you think about this here, take, think about this. Before I came home, Boozy had the world shook. Uh, they loved him. He, he, he go viral all the time for his outbursts, all this stuff. But by the time I come on, I start pointing out a lot of stuff and exposing a lot of stuff. Then people start realizing, man, yeah, he is a, f it's just entertainment, you know. Um, so a lot of these guys, you know, they get, they get in front of the camera, then they, they sell it. They sell it. They sell themselves. And people are like, oh, he a real dude. Well, I like him. I rock with him. 
But then he'll contradict himself. And then when you get all these footage and show, man, you say this here, you say this here, now you want to get mad. And you old B, they want to go off on you. But hold up, bro, you say this. I didn't say this. I'm just showing you what you say. So I've always been the bad guy, and I'm, good, I'm cool with that. But at the end of the day, um, I just show people, like, that stuff just be entertainment. Don't, don't, don't too much fall into the hype. If you want a quick laugh, go on YouTube or go where that will get your laugh. But leave it there. Leave it there. But don't, don't put these people on no pedestal. They're human like we are. Man. You know? And, bro, I, I'll be honest with you, bro, I enjoy it, bro. I just be having my fun. But I, I also like to educate the youth because they really are starstruck. They really think that these dudes really living like that. And a lot of them, come on, bro, think about it. If I'm this cold gangster, this cold stepper, this cold killer, I'm not going to be on the internet broadcasting. Yeah, I'm going to step on my killer and you play with me. I'm going to annihilate your whole family. Mm. Ain't nobody want to go to jail. <laughs> now, you got some crash dummy that do some crash dumb stuff. But I'm talking about the people like Boosies and whoever else who, who got a big name in the entertainment world. They don't want to go to jail. They don't want to leave all this stuff. Man. The nice house, the cars, the clothes, the jewelry, the women, their family. They don't want to leave this they stuff. They don't want to leave that. Yeah. No, it, indeed, bro. When you got these kind of riches. Yeah, it's hard to walk away from this. Man, oh. bro, the little money I have, I don't want to leave that. I'm 100 now, so you know I don't want to leave that, bro. <laughs> Come on. I got a few dollars, bro. I'm happy, bro. Oh. I'm happy. Man, speaking of Boosie, man, uh, a woman just went viral for begging him to give a thousand dollars for pussing her putting her uh her 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 genitalia area on live like boosie like boosie said uh put your p lips on live i give you a thousand dollars and now she like give me a thousand dollars i'll put them on live what are your thoughts when you see someone soliciting themselves to say i would degrade myself for a thousand dollars you know boosie you said it now i'm putting you to the task Give me a thousand dollars. I'm willing to put myself out there like that. What does that tell you about the state of the state of social media, the state of society? All it tell me is this been going on. It just <laughs> no, no, no. Because think about it. before I, before I left the streets, we didn't have all the social media stuff. So all this stuff new, this foreign to us. Everybody in prison, bro. I I, I, I kid you not, bro. The stuff I see on on the social media now, I be so shocked. I'd probably be like, yo, the guys I know that been down thirty and forty and fifty years, even twenty years. They gonna be lost, cause man, it's so much stuff, but it's fun too. Cause you trying to, you like, what the world? What's going on? So, women been selling themselves, women been degrading themselves, but now it just now you get to see it. Cause sometimes you hear the stories, and it, it's going back to this. Like I me, mean, I grew up in the hood, so I'm used to seeing crackheads running around, getting naked for some crack, running up and down the courtyard or whatever the case may be for crack. We we used to seeing that, right? Now with social media, the suburban children that are sheltered. <laughs> They like, what, mom, dad, what's going on? Mom, there go that man. You know what I'm saying? They the one that's shocked. You know what I'm saying? Because we grew up seeing this stuff. Well, I, I'm not going to say we, I'm going to say me. Yeah, I grew up seeing this kind of stuff. I'm used to seeing the crack haze. And I ain't going to lie, we used to call them strawberry. On the berry. When I broke out of juvenile jail, I had to hit hump just about a majority of them in my project. God so, damn it. Yeah, and I was young. We, bro, let me tell you, so I always think about this. One of my best friends, we could have got his brother killed. His brother had a little shed out in the backyard where he had a pair of ballet tennis shoes and he, they just sell, on Josephine Street, they just sell uh, dime and $20 powder bags. Mm. Not the crack, the cocaine, the regular the Yeah, coke. the regular powder. Powder. So we had this little broad in penitentiary black. She was a little short, finally something. So me and my homeboy, we would go get the Tylenol. We would crush the Tylenol off, fine, fine. Get a sandwich bag, put that in there, tie it up, and we would steal one of his brother cocaine bags and put that in there and go have sex with that lady. At the school, late at night, we'll sneak out the house. Oh, that's what the oh, oh, that comes from Josephine <laughs> Street. That stuff you be hearing them, oh, 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 saying all that stuff you be yeah. hearing. Oh, uh, you might hear Cash Money say, you hear UNLV say, you hear a lot of people, a few people in the NOs be like, oh, or that, oh, oh, yeah. oh, that comes from Josephine. Damn. So they would make that little sound. I come from my, I couldn't say all oh, back then. I was like, oh, 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 because I couldn't make the bird sound yeah. back then. <laughs> but me and my best friend, and I couldn't pick him up. And we'll walk around, second to 90 year, catch penitentiary back, go in that alley. He hump, I watch out, he, I hit him. But we was putting that man life in danger because Tylenol. people come by and they come, man, they want to rip, man, don't play with me. Now he all in that man could have got killed. That man, man. could have got, yeah, yeah but it's Tylenol. Yeah, man. Mixed with this, this different kind of. That, yeah. But, so I'm not surprised about that. Um, and, and a lot of women, females look at it like, um, 
I ask a man for some money or have sex with a man, so they just look at it like, okay, Boosie, you saying it? It's just my private. When I go to the doctor, the doctor see it. Did you, nah, hey, you know hey my gynecologist see it. That's what I'm saying. saying. I'm going to school for that now. Yeah, I'm doing that for free. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to can't now, wait till so you graduate and, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, man, so I'm going to be looking at all kind of sides. Yeah, 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 I can't wait till you graduate. Hey, oh, man, you know. Uh, speaking of bird call, I got to get your take on um, whose side you fall on. Birdman just recently went at Joe Budden for going at NBA Youngboy, which is what Joe Budden did. And uh, Birdman, he's very protective of his of his fleet. And, Big you know, Youngboy falls in one of that. Um, but Joe Budden is a podcaster. And like you do on your show, you go online and you talk about things happening. Whose side do you fall on when it comes to Birdman having words or having words for Joe Budden? Like, hey, young boy, stay, stay over there. This this fa- this family right here, leave that alone. Versus, or Joe Budden should be able to say what the hell he want about who the hell he want. You know, damn it, damn it. I don't give a fuck if it's Birdman or whoever OG up here. Do you feel like, whose side do you fall on when it comes to, like, having, let's say, the freedom of speech to talk about someone on your platform? Okay. First of all, Joe Button do the same thing I do. Yeah. Podcast. I talk about BG music yeah. or whoever music. So Joe Button got have a right to say whatever he want. He have that right. But I want to make this perfectly clear. No matter what I have going on with Birdman or whatever, as my brother, I love him. Right or wrong, I'm rocking with him 1,000. So I will be making a video about Joe Button playing with NBA young boy. <laughs> Off top, I'm, I'm so cash money. Um, I don't care about how Birdman feel about what all the rhetoric, what all we got going on, but I'm I'm rocking with that regardless. That's family, so I'm on his side. I'm on with Bird. I'm rocking whatever that CMR. I'm with. I'm so CMR. Right, but you gotta so- understand this. This is why I say that because I like to play a lot, do this and this, but I had a lot to do with that cash money. The artists protecting them dudes in the streets, starting that hot boy stuff. So I got a lot of my history buried in that stuff. So I'm going to always be that. So if you're always CMR, if uh, CBR walked in the building, which is Juski, with could have been records. Right. Uh, you know, do you have any feelings towards a Juski walking in, flashing this could have been records chain? Uh, you know, take, technically taking what Birdman put together, looking so much like what the CMR situation is. Do you do you feel any kind of way with the the loyalty and pride you have towards what you kind of helped start back in the 90s? I love it. You no, know, <laughs> I want to take a picture with Drewski because that'd be my way of trolling Birdman on the slick. Um, but here's my thing. I like that Drewski doing that because it's showing that he, the way he paying a little homage <laughs> and in a way he is it's showing that out of all these record labels, you think about this. When you think about some of the best of the best, you're going to think about Jay-Z. You're going to think about Puffy. You're going to think about Suge Knight, Jermaine Dupri. Mm. But yet you decide to mimic cash money. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, hey, man, I like it, bro. It's, see, for me, bro, I don't get my feeling about a lot of that stuff. I like to have fun. And Drewski's a, 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 a funny guy. He's a funny he guy. having fun. Um, and a lot of people should understand this. Birdman sold over a billion dollars worth of records. Yeah. This man that broke records, then did all kind of stuff to do in the industry. And out of all the big names I just named, this man came up with them people, Jay Prince, everybody. Respect to all them names I just said, but Birdman's still standing. His name's still among some of the best of the best rappers. That's no matter nice. how much bad low you hear, you gonna still see five, Amongst the people, yeah. you know what I'm saying, bro? Would you put him over uh, Master P as far as what he's done with, as a CEO of a label? No. You still put Master P above him? Yeah, because of this. P took the world by storm. I don't like P, but I got to give him his props. P took the world by storm. Um, P was able to drop more records than cash money. It's just Birdman have a longer run than P. Um, Birdman have signed some bigger artists than P because P had uh, uh, Snoop and he had Mystical. True. You know, Mia actually, you know, that's the homegirl. She did her thing. But when you talk about artists, this boy, he had the big three. 
Nicki Minaj, Drake, Lil Wayne. Come That's on. the big three. Now he got NBA young boy. Come on, man. Come on, man. So, but the reason why we gonna always give P is props because P did something and got a deal that nobody got in hip hop history. But then Cash Money got a deal that nobody got in hip hop history as well. So you got two labels from my city where I come from that did it where I can look at it and say, they did it. So I may not be able to reach what they did, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Howard 50 said, get rich or die trying. Yeah. They gave me something to say, you can't use no excuse. I'm from the hood, I only grew up with one parent. Well, I did too. Mm. So make it happen, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta give P his props. I, I'm gonna give okay. me, I, like I said, I don't like, I'm gonna put that on. I, 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 I wanna go back and forth with you about it, but I, I'm gonna let you. Let's I, no, I hear you, I hear you, because, you know, and no, forth. when you say Nikki, Drake, and Chris Wayne, and that second run, which P never had a chance to get that second run with his son and the new No Limit. He tried it, that, though. Yeah, he tried it, though. But that second run, that bird was able to say that this shit is still mine. That's pretty, nigga, uh, Nicky Drake and uh, Lil Wayne doing his run. Yeah, that's true. That's what I'm saying. You're going to give Bird his, but you're going to always look at it. This is what people going to always say no matter what. No Limit opened the door for y'all. Oh, yeah. No Limit kicked the door for him. No Limit had right. people looking at the South, had people coming for New Orleans. Which Birdman, it was right there. They were trying to get the deal too, but they yeah. weren't selling for anything. But people heard No Limit first. So P gonna always get that credit for, I'm the one came in. Y'all came after me. And Birdman don't have a problem with giving P his product. Because you know what Birdman, I was gonna say? Yeah, he did his thing, but I was doing my, we was doing our thing, and I still got longevity in the game. I'm yeah. still relevant to this day. I got all this still. Look, 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 look right now. One of the hottest rappers. They ain't must drop an album yet. Just got out of jail. And him and Bird on live trying to put something together. Yes, yeah, Honeycomb Brazy. Come on now. That young boy just got out of jail. Well, I don't know how old he is. But yeah, he young, he young, he young. Okay, he just got out of jail. Went at Finesse two times. Went at one of the hottest rappers two out. I'm going to go at his top. And now I'm going to get me a buzz. And now, but he's caught, he caught up in the rap a lot. But Stunner Smart. Okay, look, I understand you got a situation, but I'm going to still let you know I'm rocking with you. Oh. That young boy, Honeycomb Bray, was able to get Jay Prince and Birdman on live together. Man, come on, bro. There's some history we see in, bro. It is, man. It is, man. Uh, I I'm mean, just happy to be out here to see it, bro. I mean, you got Army Fatigue on. And I'm uh, camouflaged uh, down. Yeah, I, 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 don't I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. Well, let me, let me, let me make this clear now. <laughs> Magnolia Project, we was known for camouflage. Okay, tell them, tell them something. Let's get that straight. The Calio was, was the, is the Calio steppers. They wasn't doing camouflage. P just came with that camouflage oh. stuff. But the Calio Project, he's, where he's from, they're not known for this. Oh. My project known for camouflage. Come on, man. I just want to make that perfectly clear. Oh, yeah. Now, set the record straight, goddamn. Yeah, set the record straight. straight. Yes, sir. So, speaking of the young man situation, I got to get your take because, you know, Wayne has been going, like, he's been in talk right now. Of he was on Skip Bayless, but now he just did a podcast with um, with Tiger, and where he looks like a little different. His cheeks are a little bit more swole. Some people said it was wisdom teeth, but the Skip Bayless podcast and Tiger podcast look like they might have been days apart. Which I'm like, it looks like Wayne might be physically changing, or something's going on with his. You know, something's going on as far as Wayne having a swelling in his cheeks. Have you seen some of the pictures? And have you had any thoughts behind what may be happening with, uh, you know, the cash money millionaire himself? Yeah, I reached out to Slim about that. I said, you talked to Wayne, what's going on? Because it, I, I have a concern. There you go. Um, I don't believe there's no wisdom to you. I don't know nothing about all that goofy stuff. At first, I was like, well, maybe since he got off the lean or the drug, he might be getting fat from eating or whatever. But I was like, that's just too, too we need to find out because, you know, Wayne been the, in the game so long, been through so much. What's going on, Weezy? Somebody need to find out, are you okay? Yeah. Have you been to the doc? Have you been checked on? Because we don't need a, 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 a situation where, because you know, he human too. You know, you yeah. uh, a lot of people look up to Wayne, like what he did. We love Weezy, but they human. And sometimes they need people to check on them. Yeah, right. You'd be surprised if a phone call, man, you all right? You been to the doctor, man? And that makes a, a per because got, he, he got everything else. He got money, he got air. He, Phone call, man. Check on this man. Make sure he okay. Make sure yeah. that's that is a, a, a wisdom to I mean, both sides blew up like you know what I'm saying. So I was like, man, what the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but yeah. I ain't that far in the huddle no more, so I can't call. I don't have no number on weed. I can't check on. I don't know. But I called Slim and like, hey man, 
check on Weezy, man. Y'all been talking, they talk all the time, you know, they talk to him. I just was concerned, man. Nah, the whole world is concerned, man, and uh, yeah, we definitely want the best for yeah, uh, for for who we no, who, who a lot of people look at as the goat. Yeah, uh, we do want the best, and uh, you know, definitely Wayne. Check well, how you health. look at it? You talking about a lot of people? How you? Oh uh, yeah, no, nah, I straight up saw. I thought I said yeah, wisdom too. I get it. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you look at him as the goat. Um, damn, who's the goat? Uh, so there's Jay Z, Eminem, Wayne, top three. Okay, that um, uh, that's particular order you went in. Uh no 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 not that particular order it changes. How about six, um, I remember on one of them. So I will say this, the 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 run that Wayne had when he was doing all them features with Chris Brown and everybody, if he could do that one more time, just have another year nah. where he drops thirty features, the same bars, then in my mind solidified he's the goat. Let me tell you if he has one more run. Let me tell you what the problem with that is right now. Look at hip hop. First of all, hip hop is on a decline. Yes. But Wayne is always going to be looked at as a legend, one of the goats, whatever we want to call him, right? However, hip hop has changed. What I mean by that, the companies, the, 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 the big wheels, the big people was in control of who's going to be the next thing that's hot. Yeah. Not no more. Social media come along now. Now the fans get to control who hot, who we like, who we going to put in this spot right now. And right now, all these youngsters, they running it. But now these youngsters that's running gonna always pay homage to Wayne. So that's gonna help Wayne because you got people like NBA Youngboy, um, Lil, Lil Baby, you know, just to name a few. Um, and you got these different- But Wayne can still out-rap some of these guys. Yeah, but hold up, but here's the problem. He can still out-rap some of them, but the younger fans looking at it like, we don't know, we, we, this our era right here. So now when we, you know, they're going to always bring up, oh, yeah, oh, that's Lil Wayne, yeah, Wayne from the hot boy, Wayne from Cad Money, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. But the, 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 the different, the younger generation going to be looking at Lil Baby, NBA Young Boy. Now when Wayne, Wayne hop on the track with one of them boys, they're going to be like, ooh, yeah, he's spitting. So some of them going to go back and do their homework. Mm. But um, the, the youngsters got this thing. This you don't think about. Wayne has another run in him? Like another, another year run where he's doing 30, 40 features? Just dropping bars at the bar, just being a monster on just other niggas' tracks and the world giving him his flowers while he's rapping. He here's a, he have I'm not gonna say what he what he have what he don't have, but that's a lot of time consuming for Wayne and time now is not on his side right now. So what would you like to see Wayne be doing? Should you should he transition to movies? I would love to see Weezy. Okay, in some yeah, movies. yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. I would yeah. love to see Wayne in some movies. Yeah, man. just go ahead and start being start with CSI or something, man. Just go ahead and yeah. start with CSI and right. nigga start. You know, you might get in the uh, Transformer movie and right. shit. Or oh, you can come play, good play in my movie. You know? Shit, y'all you know, be shit. You know, yeah, yeah, come, hey, come get to I, it. Holler at me, Weezy. Come get to but it. As far as that that rapping, the, the, it, it's showing you, bro. This rapping is a young man game, sports now. The old some of the old heads still gonna sneak, get their thing in. But these youngsters just killing the game right now. Mm. Now, um, I have to ask you because there's a guy uh, who, Derek Chauvin, who was the person who went to jail for killing George Floyd. Um, he just recently was stabbed 22 times. And it was by a Mexican who said he did it. He was working with the Mexican mafia. He was, he was affiliated with the Mexican mafia, but also they say he was an FBI informant while he was in jail. But he said he did it for the Black Lives Matter movement and for the Mexican Mafia. So Derek Chauvin, he's still alive, but he was stabbed 22 times here recently. Um, before I even ask you your thoughts on that, um, how is it that a Derek Chauvin is even accessible to get stabbed 22 times uh, in a situation where he's in, you know, I think he's in state penitentiary uh, versus the feds, but the guy was, he says, a F FBI informant. How does someone get the drop on somebody against that twenty times? Is it that easy? Like, if, if you want somebody, you can easily get them. Period. Facts. Um, here's the thing. The guy you just mentioned, right? You kind of answered your own question without. Because yeah. here's the thing. You saying the guy part of the Mexican mafia, right? He's part of the Mexican mafia, but affiliated. He's, but he's supposed to be a government witness or informant. FBI informant as well. So now, if he's a government informant, now he's in witness protection or he's in certain parts of the jail where Derek is going to be housed at. Yeah. So now he got access to him because now everybody who's scared to be in general population or who might can't walk the yard, they're all going to be housed in this area. So now this is what we're going to do for you. 
You know, see, the blacks, we the only ones that really be holding out about the snitching. The Mexicans, as long as the Mexicans can tell on a black or tell on a white, they don't care. Oh, shit. So now what they're going to do is tell you what you do. You go in on and stab him up, hit him up as a favor, and we're going to take, you know, the, 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 the hit off your head or whatever they got on you. We're going to take that off because you're still one of us. So you go in on take care of that. Go ahead, risk your life, your freedom, whatever. <laughs> Let us know you're doing it for the cause. But that's just how they roll, bro. Um, I've seen it was it was a it was a war with the Aryan brothers in the DCs back in the, in the in the nineties in the feds. I'm talking about they got out their handcuffs, took the key from the guards, stabbed the guards up, went in the cell, killed one of the DC blacks, and drug them down the hall so everybody else could see it. It's man, it's not hard if you want to get your per, your victim in the feds. Only way you might can't get somebody if you in ADX that's underground in Florence, Colorado. But if you in population and the pens and in the hole and all that, they could get to you. Derek Chauvin, should he have been accessible? Like, it, he's a yeah. guy that you think, he's the most guy that you should be like, we're gonna keep him under lock and key. Ain't nobody around this man. Like, at least for the first couple of years. But the thing is this though, a lot of people be like, solitary can drive you crazy. So they're going to give it the lawyer, hey, man, I'm going to sign this waiver sheet. I don't want to stay in peace. I want to go in general population. Or I want a little more freedom. Or, yeah, I'll take a cellmate or whatever. Yeah. So now their plastic place, they're bringing people big shanks. Like they took the floss, the dental floss, out of a certain part, like the pins and stuff, because we used to take them. Like I could take a garbage can and start sawing on that. People take the bed, a piece of iron or whatever and take the time and keep they take that dental floss and keep on and you can make a shank wow. you know what i'm saying so man inmates are very creative so uh if a person want to kill you man they're gonna they're gonna get to you bro what are your thoughts on Derek chauvin being stabbed like did you expect like oh man that was gonna happen like like just from your experience being you know uh uh locked up as far as saying you know that was gonna happen like that kind that, that's like the Rodney King beating, like, you know, those guys, well, they got off, but if they were to go to jail and you're like, oh, does that jacket follow like a Derek Chauvin in jail to where, like, you just expect is this is going to happen? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When, right, yeah. Yeah, because you got to keep in mind, that was so big, and you got a lot of people in prison who hate the law. And yeah. you are in jail now for abusing your authority. So now people looking at it like, you know what? You were the ones who arrested me. Now you could be, you could be a black man arrested. They could just look at you, police. You arrested me and you killed somebody that was in it. Oh, we're going to crush him when he coming here. That's when everybody come together. All the criminals, all the gangs, everybody come together for one cause at that moment. Oh, Get him. Man. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? It's crazy. Um, a lot of them, uh, uh, officials, they be knowing that. They know what's going to happen. So sometimes they be like, you know what? We got to at least give up one and show the people, like, hey, Cause you gotta keep in mind, them people go home. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Them people go home, and it had been times where captains, I'm talking about the captain of the prison, AW has been caught up in a lot of uh, uh, contraband with inmates, bringing yeah. in drugs, bringing in cell phone. Google Coleman one uh, penitentiary. It's been all kind of stuff going on in prison, bro. So them gangs are, you know, keep in mind, you got gangs in prison, but they still got people on the street. That's Damn. powerful too, and he'll let them know. Look, man, we gotta go pull up on, get that stuff straight. So, yeah, I'm not surprised about. That. I'm surprised that the person didn't kill him. That's what I'm surprised. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's, that's a lot of stabbings to not uh, yeah, actually so, be effective. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. That he is surprising. Really, because he ain't really aim for the hard or try to get the fake. Some he must was faking too. He might have had something small just sticking him a lot. Yeah, just what, yeah. Just what was the weapon? Him. Let me see the size of the weapon too. Ah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know. Damn, you say sometimes the, the captain or the CEOs will be like, man, we got to give them one. Yeah, because like, they know, bro, this is something big here, man. You never know what. People might pull up on a captain or somebody, whoever ranked family member out here, be like, listen, man, you know, leave that door open. Man, prison is so dangerous, man. Have you heard of a show called Mayors of Kingstown? No. If you haven't, I'm going to tell you to watch it. It, it definitely shows How the world. Where I watch it at? Uh, I'm going to give you a login. I'm going to give you All right, because I'll be uh, watching Tubi all the time. It's on Tubi? Yeah, it, I don't think it's on Tubi, but I'm going like to give you a I'm going to get you to it. I'm going to get you to it. I'm going to get you to it. All right. Now, you know, uh, I have to ask you because, you know, Sexy Red just made a, a viral song called Free My Nigga, uh, Free My Baby Daddy. Mm -hmm. 
And she went viral for saying, like, y'all see that I'm pregnant. And I'm saying, free my baby daddy, free my nigga. And he in jail. Why would y'all think he's the person who knocked me up? And a lot of people were saying, well, don't you have conjugal visits in jail? And my question to you is that when men do have conjugal visits or let's say they're, not, they're talking to CEOs or they have, they're able to get any kind of woman in jail, whoever it is, whatever, do it be a mentality like, oh, I'm going to knock this motherfucker up? I mean, because fuck it, I ain't got shit else to do it, just put a baby in there. Is that, is that like a thing that when people come back and talk like, yeah, yeah, we, we, we shooting the club up. We shooting the club all the way up. Well, let me, let me make this perfectly clear. There's no conjugal vision of feds. Okay, yeah, thank, um, thank, thank, thank you for, for now, those that didn't know. <laughs> right. Now, I know they have it in New York. Um, California used to have it in certain prisons. I heard Mississippi had it in their state at one time, but I know for a fact it's not in the feds. Um, and the crazy part about it, a guy from New York once, once before told me that it was the federal government, government that was funding. They were probably like, what? So they won't have it in the feds. But, but anyway, um, of course, you know, if I'm in prison, I got a lot of time, and I got a woman come and see me. I got a conjugal visit. Of course, I'm trying to get her pregnant because I know one thing: she going in my sick mind. She gonna always be tied to me <laughs> through this baby here. <laughs> this my woman here. When we got a baby together, <laughs> with my child, bring my child to see me. So, you know what I'm right, right. so I'm yeah, I'm trying to shoot the club up. Why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm spread. I'm up. I'm in there. I'm uh, a, I end up spinning. How they say? I'm gonna spin and I'm gonna spin the bin again. <laughs> you spin, yeah, spin the block to, again. Yeah. And we don't worry about. How is you gonna be able to take care of the child? All that we worry about putting the baby in there, and then we'll worry about go get on welfare. So we'll worry about all the other stuff later. But I need to get her pregnant. God damn. <laughs> she's gonna tell that rule, come back and see me back and forth, back and forth. God damn. Yeah. Man, um, lastly, I have to ask, you know, I gotta get your thoughts on this because we just spoke on this off camera. Was um, you know, a guy who's been on this couch before, which is Charleston White, has now uh, I guess you could say hit the mainstream. He sat down with uh, Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. And did a, a a master class of an interview, a back and forth. I mean, this shit's crazy. This shit, one million views in a day with uh, Cam Newton on his new podcast. I forget the name. I think it's called Freaky Friday or Funky Friday or something like that. Uh, but to be on that level, to see uh, a guy who you know started in this area get into that level, and you know what for what you do, you know, on this podcast level, like what does that tell you as far as man, like this. Like you've been you've been locked down for twenty three years, uh, so many months, so many days, and you see coming out and just being able to speak and talk can get you on platforms to where you busting down a million views in a day. What is your thoughts when you see the power man, of this shit right here? I'm just happy to be able to witness that, cause I was like, man, Charleston did it. He made it. That man did a million one day. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I had a double. I said, I said, that, yeah. I said, yeah. He did that. You know, somebody like me, I'm a YouTuber, so of course I'm gonna pay attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I've always been a Charleston White fan. I was there when people was, oh, he the boy, oh, no, I don't like, I can't stand him. I remember I posted him on my Instagram, so many people, oh, gee, all right, but I, oh, I can't stand, I hate him. Now they all love him. Everybody mm-hmm. hates Chris. Now they all <laughs> yeah, love him. Know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now it's, oh man, he be, he be, he be saying something funny, he be saying something real. He be, bro, when we was trying to show y'all, hey, look at this, y'all could get him. But I got a chance to really be around him behind the scene, behind the camera, so I get yeah. a chance to really meet Charleston White versus mm. the Rat Williams, the character on TV, you know, on the thing. So I got a chance to really hang out with him and meet him, you know, you so go. it's two different, you know, but I, I was very happy to like, okay, he made it and it give people like me hope to be like, I come from prison 23 years, 10 months, and just to get in front of camera, now I know we have a voice. I know people paying attention to what we're saying, what we're doing. So that was real big, man. I just was like, wow, that's cool. That's cool right there, yeah, man. I really like that. All right, lastly, man, you know, you just sat here uh, with some other cast members of the, the reality show, but we just recently got introduced to uh, Catrice. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 how, how was that as far as, you know, uh, having her added to the reality show, Yashun, uh, and having her pop her shit on camera, because again, the world's gonna be introduced to her going forward as of now. How okay. was that as far as introducing the world to that right there? Oh, that was, uh, as if we was doing a reality show, of course, you know, people know who Toy is, they know who Kim is, but I was like, people already say I'm funny, I don't see that, right? But I was like, okay, I'm gonna make sure, you know, people gonna enjoy this, but I need, the younger crowd. 
I said, I need a little spark now. I need somewhere when this uh, pilot of this episode or this season would ever go off. You know how uh, Love & Hip Hop be like, next on Love & Hip Hop, they'll show the commercial. That's I right. said, I need where well, something going. I said, hey, I need a younger girl with a body, but let's do a sex scene. Mm. She got to be right. So I contact uh, Valentino, the old head on, out here in Dallas. Yeah. He got the club, Five Stars Grill. Yeah. Me and him, good friend. Shout out Valentino for real. Right. Um, so we had a female. I say, uh, I'm going to come over to your restaurant. And he said, yeah, got a few females. So he, me and he hooked a female up so she was supposed to come. I was supposed to meet her at 10, 10, or 1. I forgot what time we was supposed to meet. So I get there, me and my uh, camera guy, Michael, we hanging out, we eating the chicken wings and stuff, fry, we hanging out. There's a girl stripping, she's doing her thing. So the female I was supposed to meet to do the scene, she like 20 minutes late. So I'm like, they call like, you say, huh? I say, oh man, tell her, that's all right, forget about it. You know, because my thing is, I'm trying to help, you helping me, but I'm trying to help you too. You know, you about to do something that's about to, you know, you never know how big it would go. Yeah. Because I'm going to promote it. I'm going to be on real life. I'm going I'm going to promote that thing. So yeah. I'm like, nah, it's cool. So I talk, told her, hey, man, you got some money? So, yeah, I got some money. So actually, me and Toya went to go get something because she don't eat meat. So I went to go get her a salad that next morning. And I was, um, I didn't know how my two cast members were going to take that. I wanted to bring in someone else mm-hmm. into the show. You know, sometimes women get territorial too. They Come like, on now. Oh, we don't want nobody new to that. <laughs> Come on. But I was like, listen. This is mine. You know what I'm saying? I run this. I'm the boss of this. So this is what I want, right? And I explained to her. She was like, yeah, I got somebody. So she showed me her picture. I said, yo, you think she'll come out? So she called her. She was like, oh, I don't have no children. I live by myself. I can come out here. Matter of fact, I can stay. I said, oh, no, shorty, you got to go home. So, you know, we just <laughs> traded. So she said, yeah, I can come. I said, okay, I'm about to book a flight. I'm about to, you coming out here today. <laughs> so we booked the flight. Um, I had to go. We was in. I forgot the part of Texas. It started with the S. S S A C H S E. Shreveport Center. Fuck, I don't know. Start with the S. Yeah. Texas, right? Yeah. Um, so I had to drive. Traffic was heavy. I had to drive an hour and twenty-five minutes to my barber in Fort Worth. Then I was like, instead of me driving back here to go get toy because this is sexy, is it? Something like that, sexy, whatever. Instead of me driving all the way back there to go pick up Tori to, to, to come get Catrice, I was like, man, I'm not be driving here. Today. And see, then I wanted to spend time with her by myself to get to know her so she'd get cold because we about to do a, a pretty good scene that's going to hey. be like, hey. this thing might go viral. We yeah. never know. Hey. So um, I went and got her, talked to her, and kicking it with her, letting her know, you know, I ain't no creep or none of that. Don't get, little, don't get scared. But we about to, this is going down. So, um, you know, we just got in there, let the camera roll, we let it flow, man. It came out perfect, too. Got the handcuffs. I was able to, I think she need to be up here when we talk about this here. You know, oh, man. Got it, got it, got it. Let's, 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 let's bring it, let's bring it, let's bring it, let's bring it right on back on in. Come on back up here. Bring it right on back on in. Take that jacket off. Shorty, you tripping. Yes, Don't people need to see this stuff. Don't need, that, people need to see what OG Giggity was hanging around. Yeah, future. Old future, man like me. Future superstar. Future that's superstar. Right, that's Boom, right. there she go, back in the building. In the uh, goddamn! Um, I have to ask. I have to ask. Um, I know you've seen a few tuba movies. Uh, on a scale of zero to ten, if you were to grade uh the sex scene that has to go down in this in this in this uh, masterpiece of a film, um, what would you grade uh on the tuba movie level of uh, the sex scene that went down? Oh. She played her role good. Right? <laughs> My thing is this. Because I want her to be comfortable. I ain't want her to Thank you, you know, Catrice, for being so comfortable. She was very comfortable. Oh, she got in that thing and man, yo. Oh man, hey, I man. need to show y'all some of this on here right here. Oh man, got that. We might show. we might get exclusive, but I don't know. We might we might show some uh, we man, might listen, we, we might show some we might not. Came to that shower, man, I was like, man, you know, I'm an older person, so I take medication. I got high blood pressure. <laughs> and I, I was like, man, I don't need for OG Giggles to fall out and shower, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Amelie, yeah. I gotta come and get me and rush whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, she pull up, you know, with the thong on, got came with the handcuffs. Boom! Oh man! Oh no! Yeah, she um. Not a BDSM. Yeah, she took these came in, took the thongs. I said, throw them on top of the, the shower so the people could see. 
You in here naked. There you can see. Yeah. So, you know, we did the, the little kissing part, and then yeah. we did the hand cover from the back, and it. So her, from the back. her role is leading into season two. I'm assuming. Yeah. Or, or, or going to the next. Yeah, we can't get y'all. We can't get y'all all that in, in the first thing. No, indeed, I can't get y'all all that like that. No, sir. Okay, 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 okay. You might have a little something, a little exclusive uh, to take us out to, 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 to take us out with. Yeah. Um, man, I, let's see. Let's see how close. Let's see how close we can get to it. On. Let me see what you got. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me see what you got. Let me see if you go. I'm going to see if I can get a world. I'm going to get a world. Let's sneak peek what I got going on. I'm letting them know I'm in a building. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Use that camera if you got anything to show them. Uh, and, uh, Katrice, you ain't got no mic on no more, do you? I don't think I got no mic on no more. No, which is cool, which is cool. Um, as far as, uh, 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 boom, there you go. As far as, um, you know, being, of course, you know, we had our interview, but. You ain't getting. Yeah, being in this movie. Cool. Being in this movie. <laughs> You know, to, to finding yourself and finding your true talent, do you feel like this is a stepping stone in the right direction? I do. There you go. There you go. This this you aren't forced. You're 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 here on your own admission, correct? You're not yes. no there's not a gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel like this is a step in the right direction of like what's next? And welcome to Texas, by the way. Welcome to Texas. And uh what's next yeah. to come? Oh yeah, boom, right there, right there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, it fades to black. It fades to black. Y'all go buy the movie, goddamn it. Y'all go buy the movie. Oh, shit. Hey, you already know what it is, man. Hey, listen, man. I, I, I ain't got nothing to say, man. Hey, uh, Terrence, goddamn gangster. What's that? Uh, Catrice, uh, uh, in the building. Uh, the additional cast to uh, Life After the Feds. Um, once again, uh, uh, you know, uh, she, 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 she watching for the first time herself. She's like, let me see yeah, this. She never she, seen she, let me see this. Let me see this damn scene. We got the, yes, what, 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 what we got to blur out. Yeah, baby. Y'all got it good. Yeah, we got it. We got it, man. We got it, man. God damn it. Well, you come right now. Boom. It's her first time seeing her. Oh, right, look at that. Look at that. This, this, is a, this, this is the natural reaction of Kim Kardashian watching her tape <laughs> with Ray J. Come in the house. Look at you. Boom. Oh, I did that. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that me? I can't believe it. All right, there you go, man. Well, you already know what it is, man. Uh, uh, Real, life Real Life Street Stars. We in the building, man. We got another one in the bag, man. Terrence Gangster Williams, uh, again, a blessing as well. We can't wait to see what comes of this. Uh, you got a star on your hands. And again, with the other ladies that came through, uh, shout out to her and them. Uh, we can't wait to see what y'all put together. Hold up. Shout oh, out no. Jalen. Shout out to. Uh, what a name. Just the, the, the beautiful lady was on it. Oh, Royalty. Raylan. Royalty. Raylan and Royalty. Yeah, Raylan Watson. Raylan. I said Jalen. Shout out to Raylan. And shout out to Royalty. Yeah, y'all go check out So Let's Talk About a Podcast. Uh, we just popped our shit on that. Yeah. So if y'all watch this, we're going to pop it in right at the end. You're going to see it pop up. So let's talk about it. Y'all click on that to watch right. that shit go crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make that pop. And that, of course, is CJ So Cool's uh, old lady. And uh, Raylan Watts, she said she was in everybody music video on World Star. So yeah, shit, I she. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Right. Some beautiful stars. So, right. Old man, I'm hanging around the youngsters, man. And Catrice, uh, you yourself, you're an entrepreneur. You do hair, bra braiding. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, y'all oh, tap yeah. in. Book me, y'all. Yeah, so book. You know, sort of people the hair you got. Oh yeah, yeah boom. Yeah, nah, for real, for real. Real, for real. You ain't got no that yeah, fake yeah. hair. She gonna walk on it. She gonna walk on and off camera about ten more times just for y'all. There you go. This is the new brand. I will be working with y'all. All right. Have some more to come, and we'll, it will be posted on my page. So, so is that pony? What that is? Man, no. This is Where you get that from? <laughs> Keep going. Exactly. It's braiding hair, super soft. Okay, 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 okay. Oh shoot! I don't, don't, don't drop, don't drop the bag, don't drop, don't fumble the bag. They already, girl. Listen, let me hold super the money. Super soft and more is to come soon on my page. So y'all stay tuned. All right, we're going to stay tuned, man. Uh, listen, man, like you building some young entrepreneurs. I don't know who going to have next, man. Wayne, Wayne, if you're trying to get in the movie, Wayne. Pull uh, up, baby. Uh, figure it out. 
We're doing it over here on Red Ice Freestyle. Hey, you already know what it is, man. We got them in the building, man. Catrice, Terrence, you already know what it is, man. Let's rock, man. Ter wow. Real life street stars, we in the building. Wow. Ah, let go. Hit him with the wine. You got a wine? Wow. Yo, yo. Shout out to Real Ice Street Stars, nigga. Move. Hey.